In this video, I'm going to go over the top six ClickUp tricks that you can use in your business today to save more time, increase your productivity, and also just make your life easier. ClickUp can be a complex platform to learn and use. And so hopefully by the end of this video, you'll be able to improve your workflow and overall efficiency when using it on a day-to-day -day basis. Let's get started. Okay, so if you guys haven't gotten started with ClickUp yet, we'll be leaving a link down in the description below for you guys to check it out. But basically, once you click on that link, it'll take you to this page right here where you can enter in your email and then click on the get started button right here. From there, they'll just ask you a couple questions. But once you answer those questions, you should be taken to a page that looks something like this. Obviously you won't have any of the stuff that I do on my screen, but hopefully by now you guys already have a basic understanding of how the platform works. If not, we have previous tutorials on the channel that can get you started as a total beginner to ClickUp. And we'll also be leaving that in the description below for you guys to check that out. I highly recommend you guys watch that video if you guys are a total beginner. But anyways, starting off with tip number one is using task templates. So right here, I'm just gonna add another space. And for example, let's say that you have a newsletter business, right? So I'm just gonna name this newsletter and once that's done, I'll just go ahead and go into the to-do and I'll create a new newsletter called newsletter number one. Now from here, I can go inside of this newsletter and I can go ahead and start typing out some things. So for example, right, let's say I want it to be about three things. Let's say I want it to be about ClickUp tricks and I also want it to be about business and let's say I also want it to be about YouTube. So these are gonna be three different sections. And from here, if I wanna make it a little bit neater, then I can go ahead and add a divider in between each section, like so. And let's say for each newsletter, you always wanna be talking about ClickUp Tricks, Business, and YouTube, and you're just gonna be talking about different things within those categories. Instead of having to type all of this out or copying and pasting it onto a new newsletter, all you'd have to do is just click on the three dots right here, and then go to template center and then save this as a template. Now from here, I can go ahead and enter a name. So I'll call this newsletter template and I can go ahead and share it with all members on the team and then go ahead and click save. Now from here, it's gonna say that your task template has been created. Now from here, if I go ahead and I exit out, I can go ahead and create an automation. And let's say I want it to be just whenever a task is created it'll go ahead and apply a template. From here, I'll go ahead and click on select templates. And right here, you guys can see the template that we just created. I'll go ahead and click on that and click on use template. So now every time there's a task created within this list, it'll go ahead and apply that newsletter template that we just created. So I'll go ahead and click create right here. And now we can see that it's an active automation. So if I go ahead and click out of this and I create a new one called newsletter number two, I'll go ahead and give it a second to load. And now you guys can see that if I click on newsletter number two, you'll see that it has the exact same template as before. Now this doesn't just apply to newsletters. This also applies to you know YouTube scripts, to SOPs, to anything that you create in your list that is a recurring thing that you add. Now, if I go ahead and go back to the template center and I go ahead and browse the templates, you guys are gonna see that there's a lot more of these pre-built templates that you guys can also check out. For example, they have a blank podcast outline. So if I click on that, It'll say that you can report compelling and efficient program updates. And if I go back, you can see that they also have a daily briefing one for any operations that you do in your business. And they even have daily to-do lists for any personal things that you have on ClickUp. And I also recommend building out your own templates for things like this example that I showed you where you have something that you're constantly doing every single time. Now, the second tip on this list is to use automations to delegate tasks to your team members. So going back to this newsletter example, let's say that I'm the one in charge of writing each of these letters, right? So I'll go ahead and assign them to myself. And matter of fact, why don't I just go to the automate button right here and always assign tasks to myself as well as always make myself a watcher. You can do this for anybody on your team, but I'm the only one in this workspace right now. So I'll go ahead and use myself as an example. That way, let's say I create a newsletter number three, it'll go ahead and automatically assign it to myself. And then it'll also give me a notification where I can check right here and you'll see that it just created a new newsletter and added me as the watcher. Going back to the newsletter, I can go ahead and add another automation on here. Now, the great thing about automations is that I can pass this task onto somebody else on the team whenever that task changes statuses. So right here, if I go into more settings and then go into the task statuses of my newsletter, I can see that right now I only have the to-do 
and complete. Now let's say you have two people working on this newsletter, right? You have the writer and then you also have the revision person. So in this case, I would go ahead and add a new task and call it ready for review, press enter, and then I'll go ahead and change the color to orange and then I'll go ahead and click save. So now let's say I'm done writing the newsletter number one. I can go ahead and click on the square right here and change it to ready for review. Now, if I wanted to pass this task onto somebody else on the team, what I would do is click on automate right here add another automation. I would basically change the status from to do and then go down to the to and then change that to ready for review. And so basically whenever it changes from the to do status to the ready for review, I want it to do this action right here. So I'll go ahead and I would create one for changing the assignees. And I might also do one where I can add a comment and then mention them using the at sign. And I could mention anybody else on the team. In this case, it would be the person that's revising the newsletter. And then another thing that I can do is I can add it to their specific list if I have a dashboard made for them. But most of the time by just adding a comment that mentions them as well as changing them to the assignee, that will be able to do the trick and it'll notify them on ClickUp that they now have to take action on this task. So using automations like this can save you so much mental energy because you can train your team to get used to getting notifications on ClickUp so that you don't have to keep on checking in on them and asking them like, hey, how's the progress on the newsletter? You would just be able to rely on the notifications that ClickUp is sending them that, hey, this is ready for review or hey, this is ready for you to start writing. Okay, tip number three is using the ClickUp task tray to be able to minimize any tasks that you might wanna do later on. This is a super useful trick if you have a ton of ClickUp tabs open like me. And if you combine that with all the other tabs that you have on your computer, this can easily get you really confused and you can lose track of which tasks that you have to do. So if that's you, then I recommend using the task tray feature. So right here, I'm just gonna go to the newsletter number one. And right here, you can see there's an error right here that says minimize task. And if I go ahead and click on that, it's gonna show up right here on the bottom right hand corner. And I could do this for a bunch of different tasks, right? So let's say I wanna go into newsletter two and then also minimize this. It'll go ahead and minimize that right next to it. And I can even go into a different space. Like for example, let's go into social media and let's just go into YouTube SOPs and I can go ahead and trade this doc. And so basically wherever I am on ClickUp, I could basically click on anything that I have in my trade to be able to instantly pull it up. What I recommend is that if it's a bigger project that you need to block out time for, then you could put it in your task tray and then get it done one by one. But if it's a small project that takes five to 10 minutes to do, then I recommend just doing that immediately to get it out of the way so you can clear out the notification on your ClickUp. Okay, the next tip on the list is using the favorites feature. So by default, if you haven't favorited anything yet, you're gonna see that the favorites button is right above your spaces. And if you go ahead and click on that, it's probably gonna be empty. But let's say I wanted to favorite this doc right here. I could just go ahead and click on the three dots. And then right here where it says favorite, if I click on that, I can go ahead and give it a name, save the favorite. And then you'll see that it pops up in my favorites right there. From here, I can move it around. So if I want it to be last on the list, I could do that. And a really cool feature on ClickUp is that you can actually pin this to the top of your screen. So right here where it says pin favorites to top, I'll just go ahead and click on that. And then you'll see that it creates the bar on top right here. Now this works the exact same way. I could just drag this to wherever I want. And another bonus tip is that if you wanna be able to fit a bunch of things into your favorites bar, then what I recommend is actually just changing the title of the favorite into an emoji where you can remember what that emoji stands for. So for example, if I want to rename the SOPs, then I'll just go ahead and right click that, click on rename. And then right here, I'll delete what I have. And then I'll go ahead and access the emojis where let's say I just want it to be writing. And let's say I want it to be this one right here. So I'll click on that and it'll go ahead and replace it with an emoji. That way it's super small and I can fit so much more in my favorites bar compared to using words that can stretch out and make it really wide. Same thing for my content calendar, right? Like let's say I wanna rename this and I'll go ahead and choose a camera emoji. So I'll just go into my emojis list and I'll type in camera. Let's say I wanna go with this one right here. And then if I click out of that, you'll see that now it's turned into this camera emoji. I would say that for most ClickUp users, 90% of your day is just gonna be navigating through ClickUp. And so if you can create a favorites bar where you can access everything that you need per day, this is a really good trick so that you can keep track of a bunch of different things. And although it might be a little bit confusing at first as to which emoji belongs to which list or folder, once you get used to it, you can save a ton of time by navigating through the favorites bar instead of manually going into each folder, doc, task list, or whatever you have in order to get to what you need. Okay, for the next tip on the list, have you ever 
accidentally deleted something on ClickUp and didn't know how to restore it? Well, thankfully, ClickUp has a trash can where you can restore accidentally deleted views, folders, lists, and docs as long as it wasn't deleted over 30 days ago. To do this, all you need to do is click on your profile on the bottom left-hand corner. And right here underneath Template Center, you have Trash. Now from here, I have a few things that I've deleted in the past, and you can see that right here, it says items shown below are gonna be automatically deleted forever after 30 days. And if I wanted to restore it, all I would have to do is click on three dots right here, and you can see right here, it gives me the option to restore. So super neat trick in case you guys accidentally deleted something and wanted to restore it. Okay, the last tip that we have for you is to consider using a list view instead of a board view if you have a ton of stuff like a content calendar filled with a bunch of video ideas in different statuses. So normally, if you're coming from a platform like Notion, Trello, Asana, or Airtable, you're probably used to a board view like this, where you have things going from left to right, and in order to change the status of something, you would just need to click and drag. We used to do this with our content calendar before ClickUp, but once we switched over, we noticed that the list view was just a lot better for being able to see a bunch of different video ideas, along with the custom fields that we gave it. And when it comes to creating content online, you can have a bunch of different custom fields like the sponsor of the video, the status of any invoices that you have, as well as any notes that you might have taken on that specific video. Well, with the board view, you wouldn't be able to see every single custom field unless you clicked on the video idea itself. Plus, over time, you're gonna be building a huge backlog of ideas, videos that are in scripting in progress, as well as videos that are currently being edited. So if you have a board view, you're gonna be basically scrolling through all the different videos instead of just with a list view where you can scroll down just one way. And oftentimes that can look a little bit more chaotic than something like a list view. So that's more of like an optional thing that you guys can mess around with. But from our experience, we've noticed that the list view is probably the best one in terms of content creation. But go ahead and try it out for yourself and let us know in the comments below which view you guys think is the best. Anyways, those are all the tips that we have for you guys today. I hope this video was helpful. And if it was, please be sure to leave a like and subscribe for more videos just like this. We have a ton of tutorials and how-to guides on this channel that can help you start your own business. So if that's something that you or someone you know could benefit from, then please be sure to check out our other videos and also share it with a friend. Anyways, that's all I have for you today. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Thank you.